Welcome back to Wild Drama Stories, where you get all the drama from a safe distance. A short description of the stories are in the description box along with timestamps. Let's get started with story number one. Opie writes, My fiancé, 37 male, and I, 33 female, got engaged a few months ago. We are getting married soon and invitations were already sent out. Right now we are focusing on much smaller details. We have also been busy moving into our new home that we purchased together. 30% of his savings plus 70% of mine. I have to say that saving up for this house took most of my savings and prevented me from enjoying the things I love spending money on. My fiancé sat me down yesterday to talk about his quote groom speech unquote. He talked about a few points but what made me upset was when he asked if I would be okay if he mentions the house we bought and say that he was the one who bought it. I was a bit taken aback. I asked why and he said it's quote just a confidence boost unquote during the speech and that's it. I said I didn't feel comfortable with the idea because I think that it's unfair not to acknowledge the fact that I sacrificed so much to be able to buy the house. I reminded him how much I contributed but he said this doesn't change that it's our house so it shouldn't matter to me if he said he bought it himself or we both did. I refused because then people will always think the house was bought by him which is something that will never change no matter how hard I try to prove that I contributed 70%. He got mad at me and said that I was really overthinking this whole thing and making a big deal out of it. We got into an argument and he started yelling saying it's just one favor he's asking me to do and yet I'm making this ridiculous small request my hill to die on. He's basically sulking and now he's out and refusing to answer my calls. So basically he started the silent treatment till I cave in. Am I the a-hole for making this my hill to die on? Edit. My fiancé comes from a more humble background and money has always been a struggle for him and his family. It's become obvious how insecure he can be when it comes to money, especially when he compares how much I make versus how much he makes. I've never made him feel as less than and he has never took advantage of me in any way and so his recent request really got me off guard to say the least. Opie no, I do not think you are the a-hole. Both of you contributed what you could to purchase this house. You're about to get married, this is a partnership. It's very unfair of your fiancé to ask you to pretend that he purchased the entire house on his own, when in fact it's something that the two of you did together. So I understand why you're upset. Let's see what other people have to say about this. Someone comments. He has already told the guys. I say he told family also, as the groom speech is some time before the wedding for word to get out, when in fact word is already out. He is sulking like a child that knows their parent is going to catch them out. Someone else comments, quote, I reminded him of how much I contributed but said this doesn't change that it's our house. So it shouldn't matter to me if he said he bought it himself or we both did." Unquote. Am I reading this sentence correctly? He is saying it shouldn't matter to you if you both bought it but it's okay for it to matter to him so much that he's going to announce it to both your families and your wider social circle at the wedding? Whoa, the hypocrisy. In my opinion, this is a hill worth dying on. Yes, on the surface level it's quote just unquote words in a speech. But the deeper issue is that he does not value your massive contribution to your shared life. And he wants to paint a false picture to your shared friends and family denying it. He's basically setting you up to be painted as a gold digger when he's the one benefiting from your scrimping and saving. I have a hard time believing this is the only instance of this level of disrespect in your relationship and if you ever have kids I'm certain you can look forward to him moaning to all your friends and family that he does so much work as a father. Reed changed one diaper while you actually shoulder the majority of the childcare. 
If you don't have kids, I imagine it will be something else like that. I really hope I'm wrong, and this is just temporary brain worms on his part. But either way, not the a-hole. Someone else says, exactly. Imagine Opie asking him to tell everyone that she bought the house on her own. Opie should run from this guy. To this Opie replies, I would never ask such a thing. Wouldn't even occur to me, honestly. Let's get a final comment. Someone says, this is actually a pretty big deal. One, he wants you to go along with a lie that makes him look good at your expense. Two, it's a permanent lie, unless he plans to face up after the wedding, which I doubt. Three, it's a lie that mispresents the balance of your relationship. Instead of partners, he wants to be seen as the quote, head, unquote, is he prepared to take on the responsibility of that position and let you spend all your money on you while he shoulders the financial responsibility for the household? Or does he want you to continue to bankroll 70% while he gets credit for 100%? Four, it reveals an ugliness in how he thinks of you and wants to present the two of you as a couple. He should be proud to have a wife who earns and saves and sacrifices for your future together. Instead, he wants to claim your accomplishments as his own and expects you to accept whatever impact this has on how friends and family view you, all to, quote, boost his confidence, unquote. 5. He is lying to you. It's not about a confidence boost, it's about him declaring his status as the head of the house and the breadwinner, and doing so by belittling your contributions. 6. His response tell you clearly that he is lying. He calls it a small thing, one little favour, but he goes ballistic when you say no. 7. And seriously, the silent treatment? Just no. Consider your next steps carefully, not the a-hole. Well, Opie didn't give too many replies, but in one of them she did mention that it's something she deals with a lot with her fiancé, and that is the silent treatment. It seems very much to be his way of getting her to give in to whatever he wants her to. Unfortunately, there isn't an update on this. A lot of times the OPs never update on it or sometimes months go by before we do get an update. If there is an update, it will be on text on screen right now, as well as in the description box. And if it's a long update, there will be a link to a video on that. Let's move on to story number two. Opie writes, I, 26 female, and my boyfriend, Nick, 27 male, have been dating for almost a year, and something that has always bothered me is how Nick does not believe in maintaining or taking care of his vehicles. Background. To give some context, Nick bought his car brand new about five years ago and has put about 70,000 miles on the vehicle. Since purchasing the vehicle, he has never had an oil change, nor does he do any kind of regular maintenance. I would like to clarify by saying Nick's refusal to maintain his vehicle is not due to any kind of financial insecurity. Nick has an incredible job that pays him very fairly. As a hobby and side job, I like to restore vehicles for a profit. I am by no means a mechanic. I mostly clean up the vehicle, do bodywork and paint restoration. However, I do have a pretty fundamental understanding of cars, and I know how to do the basics. Story. Nick called me yesterday on my day off and told me he was about 10 minutes from my house and that he had a flat tire and asked if I could come to help him out. I grabbed my tool bag and headed out. When I got there, Nick did not only have a flat tire, but his front left rotor was cracked. Rotor is part of the car's brakes and his rim was bent to heck. I was telling Nick that his car was undrivable and that he needed to call a tow. Nick started arguing with me, telling me that it was just a flat tire and that it was not a big deal. I tried showing Nick how bad the damage was, but he insisted I was overreacting and that he just needed me to change the tire. I refused, and in Nick's own words, I started mothering him on how poorly he takes care of his car. The argument got heated, and Nick lashed out at me and started saying things like, 
quote, just because you have a set of pink tools and watch YouTube doesn't make you an effing mechanic, unquote. After Nick said this, I started to pack up my tools and told him that he was right, I'm not a mechanic, but that he should probably call one because I'm not changing his tire. I left Nick on the side of the road and he refuses to talk to me until I apologize for abandoning him. Am I the a-hole? No, OP, I do not think you are the a-hole. You went out there to help him and instead he lashed out. You shared some basic facts with him. But let's see what other people have to say about this. Someone writes, not the a-hole. And yikes, if he won't maintain a high-end purchase, how does he treat his home? He has made fun of your car knowledge, yelled at you for making an accurate statement about his broken car and demanded an apology, none of which you deserved. Is this how he normally responds in stressful situations? To this OP replies, I'm going to answer your question with way more detail than you asked for. I was raised by a single mom. I never had a father figure growing up. When something would break in our house, I would teach myself how to fix it. And my mother always encouraged me to chase how mechanically inclined I was. After I met Nick's parents, me and his father really bonded over our love for cars and our love for fixing them. Every time I would go over to Nick's parents' house, me and his father would inevitably end up in the garage tinkering. Nick has always been insecure about how quickly me and his father developed a relationship. Nick obviously is not very mechanically inclined and has never showed any interest in cars. The relationship I have with Nick's father has been a sore spot in our relationship for a long time. And I think it is why Nick lashed out the other day. Someone else comments, my wife has pink tools. I use them all the time. Guess what? They effing work just the same. OP is not the a-hole. And her should-be ex, boyfriend, is a total a-hole who doesn't understand basic car maintenance. And let's get a final comment. Not the a-hole. Had an ex like that. He stole my toolbox. Well, I think Opie and her boyfriend will sort this out. And hopefully her boyfriend will learn some basic vehicle maintenance from now on. Or at least learn how to change his own tire. Well, that's it for this edition of WOW Drama Stories. I thank you so much for joining me. If you did like this, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload again. Until next time, wishing you a drama-free life.